CBS reports UFO, friend, foe, or fantasy. Reported by CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Reports of flying saucers are nothing new. From the beginning of recorded time, men have been seeing unexplainable things in the sky. And there's no reason to doubt they saw something. The question is, was what they saw really there? And what was it they really saw? Walter Cronkite 50 years ago in 1966 with a CBS News special on UFOs. Many people may want to believe, but there's never been any solid evidence of flying saucers or alien visitations. So instead of waiting to be found, why don't we go looking for them in interstellar space? That is the plan announced this week by famed astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, and a Russian billionaire, Yuri Milner. Jeffrey Kluger, Time Magazine's editor-at-large, is here to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. It's so easy to be dismissive of this whole idea until you read those names. And then you think, these guys must have a plan. What is their plan? Their plan is, instead of sending large spacecraft that have to carry all their fuel along, if you miniaturize your spacecraft to about one gram, which means that wow. five of them could fit in a teaspoon, yeah. build several thousand of these, send them out and use them, uh, propel them with lasers, basically even as small as they are, you put a one square yard mylar sail on them, hit it with a powerful laser, and you can achieve a quarter of the speed of light to get out to these stars. How long is it gonna take to get out to these stars? Well, the closest star system is 4.3 uh, light years away and one light year is six trillion miles. So it would take, if using traditional chemical spacecraft, it would take 30,000 years. In this case, it would take 20 years to okay. get out to Alpha Centauri. So once you get a laser, you shoot it out there, it's finally there in this, the system that we think life could exist on. Right. What are they actually, like, what are they measuring that they, we could use to know? They measure a few things. First of all, you, you simply send back imagery, and you can tell if a world is the right color or has the right look to, to support life. But you also look for the spectroscope. You look at the fingerprint of biology in an atmosphere. So you look for methane. You look for anything that suggests the chemistry of chlorophyll. You look for oxygen. And all of these things suggest that even if life isn't there, mm -hmm. it's a hospitable place for life. What's interesting interesting too is that this is a private project it's going, the initial investment is a hundred million dollars but yes. ultimately it's going to cost a lot more than that it's going to cost a great deal more than that yeah the hundred million dollars is seed money which tells you something about this when you've got a tenth of a billion dollars and that's just your starting money the estimated total cost would be about 20 billion dollars so it would take about 20 years to figure out how to do this and to launch the probe so it's going to be a while but once you get it done they're on their way. But is this the future to have private citizens say, let's let's do this on our own. Let's not rely on the government. I think so. And the reason is it takes a handful of people with very deep pockets and a very resolute will to do this, to get it done. When you're working with a government, when you're working with any kind of any kind of bureaucracy, you have so many constituencies to appeal to, so many constituencies whose approval you need. When it's done privately, you just put up the money and launch. What's the biggest challenge for this project, Jeffrey? Well, the biggest challenge for this project is time. I mean, we'd like to think that we're gonna see these things soon, but they're gonna take 20 years to build, 20 years to fly out there, even at quarter of the speed of light, and then it'll take about five years for the data to get back. So patience is a part of it. And also there are some technical obstacles to overcome. When they're flying through space at a quarter of a million, a quarter of light speed, even a dust grain that hits the sand, could uh, hits the screen, could obliterate this spacecraft. When you look at the board of directors, it was initially Hawking and then it was Milner, and then yeah. Zuckerberg Zuckerberg came on last, and yeah. he's kind of the wild card to so many people. Exactly. What do you think he's going to bring to this project? I think Zuckerberg brings two things. He brings very deep pockets, one of the deepest sets of pockets in the world, and he also brings the infrastructure, the, the intellectual infrastructure that is Facebook. You have a collection of some of the smartest, most innovative people in the world working at Facebook. You put these folks together on this kind of innovative idea, and as long as they bring the energy they brought to social media, to the idea of getting to Alpha Centauri. It's like a Silicon Valley approach exactly. to it. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly what it is. A lot of private willpower here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Jeffrey Kluger, thanks very much.